Hello everyone. In this lesson, I will show you how to describe speech sounds, mainly the consonants, based on certain characteristics that are different from vowels. Accordingly, this lesson will be organized as follows. First, I will present how the consonants are described in terms of their place of articulation and elaborate on the main speech organs that contribute in the production of speech sounds. Then I will ponder on the description of sounds based on the manner of articulation and the nature of the air flow. And finally, I will reflect on voicing as a defining characteristic in speech sounds description. Let's start with the place of articulation. When you are to describe consonants in terms of their place of articulation, there are three main points to consider in this respect. The first of which is which speech organs contribute in the production of speech sounds. Second, where production takes place. And finally, what speech organs come into contact to produce speech sounds. However, when we describe speech sounds based on their manner of articulation, we examine the nature of the airflow restriction. And as I have mentioned in the previous lesson, consonants receive either a complete or a partial block of the air stream. And the last feature in describing consonant sound is voicing. Here we examine whether the consonant sound creates a vibration in the vocal cords or not. And to know that, you can just put your hands on your throat as shown in the picture to test whether there is a vibration or not. So let's see each feature assigned and reflect on it. As I have mentioned earlier, the description of consonant sounds in terms of place of articulation is based on the name of the place in the vocal tract at which the air stream is restricted or the speech organs used to produce sounds. The sounds are characterized with their similarity in terms of place of articulation. The most categories of sounds based on their place of articulation are given as follows. Bilabials. These are sounds produced at the level of both lips. That is, the production of bilabial sounds occurs when both lips are brought together. For example, the initial sounds in the words beat and pet are bilabials. Some other bilabial sounds are m, n, and w. If you pronounce any bilabial sound, you would notice that they are produced with both lips brought together. Then we have labiodentals. These sounds are made using the upper teeth and the lower lip. In other words, a labiodental sound is produced when the lower lip is in contact with the upper teeth. For instance, the final sounds of the words wife and half are labiodentals. Dentals and interdentals. Interdentals are sounds that are produced with the tip or the blade of the tongue touching the back of the upper teeth. In English, for example, the sounds v as in the and th as in thin are interdentals or dentals. The alveolar sounds. An alveolar sound is a sound that is made with the tip or the blade of the tongue touching the alveolar ridge. Some alveolar sounds are among others s, z, r, l, t, and d. Another feature of consonant sounds in terms of their place of articulation is palatal. In the production of a palatal sound, the front part of the tongue touches the hard palate. In English, for instance, the only palatal is the semi-vowel, i, as in yes. Another feature of consonant sound 
is paltroalveolar. The production of such sound is made with the tongue raised further back towards the heart palate behind the alveolar ridge. English has four paltroalveolar sounds. Sh, j, j, and ch. Velars. In the production of the velar sound, the back of the tongue touches the soft palate. For example, k and g are velars, as in kit and get, respectively. Glottal. This is a feature that describes the sounds that are made at the level of the glottis. English has only one sound that is produced at the glottis point, which is a, uh, as in some English dialects. For example, when they say little, bottle, water, etc. These were some of the features that characterize consonant sounds in English based on their place of articulation. The other group of features belongs to the manner of articulation. Some features in this regard are as follows. Stops or plosives. This feature characterizes consonant sounds, the production of which is made with a total obstruction of the air stream at some point in the vocal tract. Some sounds that are described as Stops or plosives are p, b, d, t, k, g, and e. Fricative, a manner of articulation feature that describes sounds which are made with incomplete or partial block of the air passage which allows it to escape through a narrow opening, which in turn causes a friction. Such fricatives are and affricate. Additionally, we have affricate. An affricate is a sound that the production of which involves two manners of articulation. Initially, the air is blocked completely, then it is slowly released. Put it differently, the air stream held and released gradually, causing a friction and then a free emission of air usually a combination of stop and fricative. Examples are j and ch. Nasal. It is a feature that characterizes consonant sounds that are produced with a total obstruction or block at a certain point in the vocal tract, like stops, but in the production of nasals, the velum is lowered to let the air stream pass through nasal cavity. The nasal consonants in English are n, n, and n. Liquids. Liquids are the consonant sounds that their production involves a partial obstruction when the tip of the tongue is in contact with the alveolar ridge, like in l and r. The last thing we have is glides. This term characterizes the consonant sounds that are made without any closure in the mouth, and because of this property, they are referred to as semivowels. They are namely y, 
and woo. Let's consider the IPA chart of the consonant sounds. As you can see, each consonant sound is described in a number of features. For example, the sound N can be described as a voiced, bilabial, nasal sound. I have put a link of the IPA chart description. Just follow it to download the IPA chart of consonant sounds. And before we end this stream, let's bring into practice what we have gone through. Try to answer the following questions and compare with the answers that you find in the description below.